Calming the Jitta with Banya, June 22, 1979. All of you who come here for instruction, please be earnest and resolute in your practice. I'll do my best to give you the instructions. Sometimes I cover everything that I know, and sometimes I only touch on a few points. But I have never hidden anything from you. I have told you all that I know regarding my practice and how difficult it was. I revealed it to you so that you can use it as an example. It's not for showing off. When fighting the Gilesas, you have to be aggressive, or else you will not even scratch the surface of them. There are times when you can practice lightly, but there are also times when you have to commit your total effort. Such a time will come, and it will happen within your hearts, and you will know it if you practice with discernment and sound judgment. You'll know when you arrive at a situation that forbids you from retreating, that you must only go forward. You'll either lose your life or realize the truth. I myself have experienced this. I've never thought that I would become your teacher. Looking back at my stupidity and the restlessness of my jitta, I never thought that I would be in this position. But the jitta is not above training. It can be trained. When the jitta becomes very restless, you have to be forceful. You have to reduce your food consumption and intensify your exertion. You have to discipline yourself in every respect. When the body weighs heavily on the jitta, you have to fast. This is the way of training yourself, even when the body is not oppressive to the jitta, but it's still restless then you must intensify your investigation to search and destroy the Gilesas. When you are forced to totally commit yourself, then you will come to experience the result of your wisdom and mindfulness. I have a coarse temperament. I could not practice lightly, but had to practice very aggressively in order to achieve result. That is why I can attest to you that in times of suffering when you're driven into a corner, you can surpass it. You'll not remain stupid. During such a time, you'll be forced to think of a way out. When you do, then wisdom will arise. It is the same when you're surrounded by the Kelesas. You'll be forced to figure a way of escape. You'll have to utilize Satibanya to get you out of the mess. The Gilesas will then retreat, leaving you in a state of calm. At such a time, you'll gain confidence in your wisdom and mindfulness that is capable of destroying the Gilesas. You'll never forget the result that arises from this strenuous exertion because it will be impressed in your hearts. This is why I want you all to use Banya. You shouldn't wait until you have established Samadhi before using Banya. When you are developing calm, you have to commit your total effort. The Gilesas are in the Jitta, and so is Zatipanya, so there is no reason why Zatipanya cannot get rid of the Gilesas in order for you to calm down. If you are resolute, then the state of calm cannot slip from your grasp, and the Jitta will definitely calm down. You must not let the Jitta lead you astray, but rather you must use your mindfulness to direct it into calm. When you want to be calm, you have to closely watch the Jitta, because the Jitta is the one that prevents itself from calming down by thinking endlessly. That, in turn, creates mental pictures to fool you. There is not a single moment in which the jitta does not conceive these mental images. To see where the jitta is leading you to, you have to watch it closely. No matter how fast the jitta becomes, mindfulness will be just as fast, because the jitta can't escape from mindfulness. You will then get the jitta to calm down. This is the way of calming the jitta. In the beginning stages of practice, calming the jitta can be quite difficult, but you should not let it obstruct your practice. When you're about to pass away, the pain will be very severe, especially if you haven't developed any tamma in your heart. You won't have any mindfulness and wisdom to protect you, and you'll be entirely engulfed by pain. But if you have the tamma, you'll be strong and firm to face up to this final moment. The Gilesas are strong, so you cannot be weak. You must be strong, too. Usually it is the Gilesas that are always strong, and you're always weak. You can't be weak, but must be equally strong. When you've established some calm, you should investigate and develop banya, because the development of samadhi isn't restricted to being mindful solely of your meditation object. You can also use banya to calm down the citta. This is called banya develop samadhi. The calm that arises by banya will make you very courageous, much more so than from concentrating on a meditation object. I really want you to experience this. What I have told you is from my own practical experience, and I have not 
added anything to it. This is exactly how it was. I am showing you the results that I've experienced within my own heart. It is the truth that is now within my heart, and I am telling you just this truth and nothing more. Be really earnest and really commit yourself to the practice. Don't speculate about the Magga Pala and the Bana. Just observe and focus your attention on the one who is confused, because this is the one who obstructs the Magga Pala and the Bana from you. It's your thoughts, imagination, and delusion, which are the thorns that are obstructing you from attaining the Magga Pala and the Bana. You have to calm the Jitta. Once the Jitta calms down, then happiness will arise and become the Magga Pala and Nibbana's living proof. After you have emerged from this state of calm, then you should investigate. You must investigate the body. Look at it clearly. It's always with you. Why can't you see the truth of this body? It's merely a piece of skin wrapped around a skeleton, but you mistake it for a human being, a person, considering it beautiful and permanent. You are deceived by your own delusion because the body is anitsang the kang and anatta. It's a living cemetery. It's the same with everybody who lives in this world. You have to investigate to see this truth, and then you'll see the thamma. To think that this body is permanent is really the delusion created by the Gilesas. If you believe the thamma, then you must not believe the Gilesas. You have to investigate and analyze in order to remove the delusion created by the Gilesas. Then you'll see that this body is not I or mine, not Nitzang, not Sulkang, not Atta, not permanent, pleasant, or a self. It's truly a nitsang dukkang and anatta, impermanent suffering and not self. Get to see it clearly. Investigate earnestly. You have to have calm as a practitioner, and especially so as a bhikkhu. You'd really waste your human birth if you can't realize from your tamma practice peace of mind, freedom from suffering, and nibbana. It will really be a shame. So don't speculate about the Maggapala and Nibbana because this is just the Kilesa's diversion. You should follow the Thamma which teaches you to look at the heart because the Kilesas are in the heart and the means of eliminating the Kilesas are also in the heart. Where are the Four Noble Truths? Where is Dukkha? The Dukkha of the body and the Dukkha of the heart are inside yourselves. You are their creator. Why can't you see the truth of Dukkha? And what is it that causes this Dukkha to arise and consume your heart? What else can it be if not the Gilesas, which the Lord Buddha called Samudaya, the cause of Dukkha? It's in your heart. Who'll detect this Samudaya if not Satibanya? You'll see the Gilesas and the cause of Dukkha within your heart with Satipanya. You must not speculate, but must delve into your heart, because that's where the truth is. When it is time to use Satipanya, you must use it. You can do it, otherwise the Lord Buddha would not have taught you to do so. Some of the Savakas had to struggle just like you're doing now. You can see this from the scriptures. For instance, the venerable Chula Pantaka who could not memorize some chants for four months, so his brother got very disappointed with him. When they were invited to go for dana with the Lord Buddha, his brother did not invite him because he considered him very stupid. Because of this, the venerable Chula Pantaka became very depressed and took the opportunity to investigate the Tamma using his Satipanya and attained enlightenment right on that very day. When the Lord Buddha noted that not all the bhikkhus had come yet, he told someone to go and fetch the missing bhikkhu. The Venerable Tula Pantaka, in addition to his enlightenment, had also attained the supernatural power of being capable of creating a thousand images of himself. So when the person to fetch him arrived at the monastery, he met many Tula Pantakas and did not know which one to invite. He returned to tell the Lord Buddha about this. The Lord Buddha told him to grab the first Tula Pantaka that he saw by the robe. When he did this, all the other Tula Pantakas disappeared. The Lord Buddha already knew that the Venerable Jula Pantaka had attained enlightenment because his brother disciplined him by not inviting him to go for dana with the other bhikkhus. His brother did this for a reason, and the Lord Buddha did not reprimand him for it. His brother was already an arahant. You can see how difficult it was for them, but when they strived, they could eventually attain enlightenment. You are human beings like them. Although you might not possess any supernatural power, you at least have the power to subdue and destroy the Gilesas. You must really commit yourselves. Be really resolute and earnest. The Magga, Pala, and Nibbana are right here within your heart, but you just let the Kilesas trample all over you. Not to be able to enjoy the taste of the Tamma is really a shame for a practitioner. You tend to let yourselves be dragged away by the Kilesas all the time, so you should be very strict with yourselves. And what is Magga? It's Sila, Samati, and Banya. You're already keeping sila, so there's no need to talk about it, other than samadhi and panya. What prevents the heart from being calm? 
You know that it is because of the kilesas luring you away from your meditation practice. You must therefore apply satipanya to calm the citta or use a mantra. But if using a mantra does not calm the citta, then you must use satipanya to investigate what the citta is thinking about. It has been thinking from the first day of your lives up until today, but what good has this ever done you? You have been continually deceived by the delusion created by the Gilesas within your minds. Aren't you tired of this? You get tired of many things, but why don't you ever get tired of being fooled by the Gilesas? If you are really desirous of enlightenment, then you must use Satipanya. You have to ask yourselves what you are thinking about, because this is the way of using Satipanya. At this moment, if you are going to think, you must think of the Tamma. You have to be really earnest in order to achieve results. Satipanya will remove all the delusions that have blinded the Jitta, and gradually bring about Nirotha through development of the Magga. Once the Magga is fully developed, then all the Kilesas from the coarsest to the most subtle will disappear. You can develop Satipanya to defeat the Kilesas. Then the Magga Pala and Nibbana will appear in your hearts. After the Kilesas have been vanquished, then there is no need to ask where Nibbana is. The Arahants themselves never ask about Nibbana because the word Nibbana is just a signpost pointing the way to Nibbana. For example, if you were to put up the name of this monastery at the entrance, it would not make any difference to you, because you already know that this is Wat Bantad. But to those who have not come here before, it would make a difference. When they first arrived, they would ask, What monastery is this? After seeing the sign, they would say, Oh, this is Wat Bantad. Those who live in the monastery don't need the sign. Similarly with those who already know the Maggapala and Nibbana. They don't have to read about them because they already know within their hearts. The important thing is to remove all the Kilesas, then there won't be any question. What are Sammuti and Vimutti? What is the real truth? The term Nibbana is Sammuti. What is it that is given the name Nibbana if not the purified Jitta? What else could it be? You have to purify your citta, and after you have done that, you will have no doubt. After you die, where will you be? If you've attained Nibbana, this will not be an issue. It will only be an issue for those who still have the Gilesas. Wherever they are, they will always be devoured by the Gilesas. It is not Nibbana that afflicts the world, but the Gilesas. As practitioners, you must be resolute and earnest. Totally commit yourselves to eradicating all the Gilesas from your hearts. There has never been a single Arahant so out of his mind as to ask what the state of purity is or what Nibbana is. All that's necessary is to have your Jitta purified. Every question will then be answered. The question regarding the time and place of the Lord Buddhas and all the other Buddhas entry into Paranibbana will be answered in the purified Jitta. Looking from a purified Jitta, you will understand because it's the same truth. They merge perfectly together. All questions will disappear the instant you attain the state of purity. Wherever you are, you will always be with Buddha, Tamma, and Sankha right within your heart. Once the Buddha, Tamma, and Sankha have arisen in your hearts, they will become the Tamma Badibo, the light of Tamma. They all become the one Tamma. As far as the Buddha, Tamma, and Sankha are concerned, this is merely a conventional way of describing these three aspects of the one Tamma. But after they've appeared in your hearts, they will become the one Tamma. I translate Matsima, the middle way, as suitability. This is the suitable practice for the eradication of the Gilesas. If the Gilesas are forceful, then the Matsima must also be forceful. When the Gilesas become more subtle, then the Matsima must also become more subtle. When the Matsima overwhelms the Gilesas, it will then destroy all the Gilesas and will retire from active duty, because the Matsima Badibada, or the middle way, which is the means of eliminating the Gilesas, is Sammuti. The Gilesas are also Sammuti. They are the binding Sammuti, while the Matsima is the unbinding Sammuti. The Four Noble Truths, Dukkha, Samudaya, Nirotha, and Magga, are also Sammuti. Nirotha is the cessation of Dukkha. Once Dukkha has ceased, what else is there to do? At the final moment when Dukkha completely disappears, you'll know that it has forever ceased. Why practice any more? You've already achieved your goal. The one who knows the cessation of the Gilesas is not the Noble Truths. The cessation of the Gilesas is what you're actually after, but the one who has attained this state makes no comment at all. He doesn't say that he takes or gives, for he has now arrived at the absolute suitability, the natural state of Matsima, being in the middle of love and hate, just right, proper, and appropriate, being contented, not hungry, nothing is too much or too little. 
It's not affected by praises or criticisms because it's fully contented. Concerning the four muggas, the four palas, and nibbana, if you haven't practiced, you'll always be in doubt. But after you've practiced and become enlightened, you'll not be in doubt at all. At the final moment, when the jitta completely gets rid of avidya, it happens in a single instant. At that instant, the magga merges with the pala, and immediately after that, it's mistakenly described in the scriptures as the arahatta pala, the fruit of arahanship, when in fact it's nibbana, because when the magga and pala are still in action, it can't be nibbana because it's still samuti. It's similar to walking up the steps of the sala or building. When you place one foot on the sala floor while the other foot is still on the step, you haven't yet accomplished your goal. But when the other foot is lifted from the step and placed on the sala floor, then right at that instant you've achieved your goal, which is similar to achieving Nibbana, although the scriptures describe it as the fruit of Arahanship. When you get there, it won't be an issue. The Lord Buddha had to clarify this point, because had he not done so, the sadhakas who had attained Nibbana would have asked him anyway. Why didn't you mention this point? That was the reason why the Lord Buddha divided these attainments into nine stages. The four paths, the four fruits, and Nibbana in order to be precise and prevent any confusion amongst all the Arahantsavakas who must pass through these nine stages. After you've attained the ultimate goal, all relationships will then disappear. When the path merges with the fruit, there's still a relationship. That's why the Lord Buddha emphasized that Nirodha must be completely realized. Nirodha is the cessation of Dukkha. In my own words, it means that you should strive for the total cessation of Dukkha. But you usually interpret it to mean different from what it's intended to. Instead of exerting for the removal of the Gilesas, you become embroiled with how to achieve Nirotha. As soon as you've got rid of the Gilesas, Nirotha will appear. The truth and theory are two different things, two different worlds. The truth is absolute, whilst the theory can change, and mustn't be used to measure the truth. For instance, when you hear about the heavenly abodes, or the paths, the fruits, and Nibbana, you can't help but speculate, because your Jitta hasn't actually attained them yet. You can only commit them to memory. Although the jitta may be able to remember by heart what nibbana is, the jitta itself hasn't yet realized nibbana, for it's still fully possessed with the gilesas. This is what is meant by memory. Please remember this well. But when the jitta has passed these various stages of enlightenment by practice, but when the jitta has passed these various stages of attainments by practice, they'll then become real. They are the truth. Your questions and doubts will be eliminated. For example, if someone tells you about London, England, all that you can do then is to speculate and imagine in your minds. But when you yourselves actually go to London, then what you've imagined in your minds will totally disappear and be replaced by what you see. What you've imagined is false and will be replaced by what you actually see. What's left impressed in your minds will be the truth. It's the same with the four paths, four fruits, and Nibbana. You remember them but are always doubtful. But when you've realized them, all your doubts will be eliminated. The truth and memory are two different things. They are worlds apart. For this reason, no matter how many Arahants there might be, even if there were a million or more, there would not be any doubts of contradiction amongst them. Similarly with those who have gone to London, there would not be any contradictions amongst them because they have all seen the exact same thing. Before you would have questioned, what are the Maggas, what are the Palas, what are the paths and fruits of the Sodabanna, or the Sakadagami, or the Anagami, or the Arahant? But as soon as you've practiced and passed through these stages, then you'll know what they are. After you've reached Nibbana, there'll be no more contradictions because all the Samwati have disappeared. Doubts and questions are Samwati. After you've seen the truth, all the doubts and questions will disappear. The Lord Buddha called this Limutti, which means freedom. You've been shouldering the futile burden of memory and speculation for a long time. Why don't you shoulder the truth for a change? See what it's like, how heavy it is. Shouldering the burden of memory and speculation is a very heavy load, but you don't realize this. You should carry the load of truth to see whether it is heavy or not, and to see the difference between them. You've learned many truths from the scriptures. Now you should learn the truth from your practice. If they are not different, why would the Lord Buddha have taught you to practice? The Lord Buddha taught you to develop Pariyatti, Patipatti, and Patiwetha, which means studying the scriptures, practicing the teaching, and then attaining the results. Bariyatti is the studying of the middle way. You can study from the scriptures or from your preceptor on the day of your ordination when he teaches you the five parts of the body. Gesa, Loma, Naka, Danta, Dato. Hair of the head, hair of the body, nails, teeth, and skin. You must then apply them in your practice by continually investigating these body parts to see them all the time. 
This is Bhartibhati, or practice. When you've achieved this, it's Bhartivetha, the gradual realization of the truth. Bhartivetha, or the results from practice, don't usually appear all at once, but appear gradually. When you've uprooted all of the kilesas, you'll then achieve the full Bhartivetha, or result. All of your burdens will be shed. The problems caused by the kilesas will all come to an end, and you'll live forever in peace. The victory of the world is different from the victory of the Thamma. The Lord Buddha said that no matter how many people you might have killed in battle, even if it were millions, it wouldn't bring you true peace and happiness. To destroy all the kilesas within your hearts is most supreme. To conquer yourself is the greatest victory. Don't ye want this kind of victory? Therefore, all of you who come to live here, and there are many of you, must watch your kilesas. You have to be especially mindful of the kilesa that thinks very highly of itself. This is very important. You should not display your kilesas, but should instead display the thamma if you want to live together peacefully. You should always follow the thamma teaching that exhorts you to always have metta or loving-kindness for your colleagues, regardless of whether they are good or not, accomplished or not. You should always treat them well. If they have achieved something, then you should praise them. Then you'll all live in peace, harmony, and happiness. All of you come from different places and have different temperaments. So you have to blend together to become one body. <laughs>